Ever wondered how to create Apple's liquid glass effect? Turns out you can create it right inside Illustrator and save it as a graphic style for an instant one-click result anytime. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create this style and make it super easy to use on anything you design. So here I'm using a rectangle with a gray fill as a solid background, and I'm just gonna grab the ellipse tool, but you can do this with any shape. And the dark background kind of makes it easier to see the glass effect in action. So we're gonna set it up this way. And first up, we need to open up the appearance panel, and we're gonna go down to opacity, and this is for the fill specifically, and we're gonna drop this to 20%. And we're now gonna thicken up the stroke as well, a bit thicker than normal, just so we can see what we're doing. Right, next let's go to the gradient panel. Uh, this isn't the gradient that I want, so I'm gonna switch to the default black to white. So if you are following along, I would just follow all of these steps and then you can customize your specific glass effect at the end. So either end of the gradient slider, we want a white swatch. Then we need to click on the gradient slider to add another swatch and we'll move this to around about 20%. And then on the other side, we're gonna go for around about 80, so the gradient is symmetrical. And then on the far left side, we're gonna select this and drop the opacity to five. We're gonna do the same for the far right swatch, so 5%. And then this next one is optional, but I'm gonna set my angle to 45. And now you can adjust the swatches and even push the midpoints a bit to fine tune your specific glass effect. And that's pretty much it. Now what you can do is actually save this gradient as a swatch, just so you never have to create it again. However, if we close this panel down and zoom in a bit, you will see an issue. We have the stroke aligned to the center, so a transparent stroke is creating this double border. So we're gonna to have to align that either to the inside or the outside. And now that we've done that and the gradient is clearly in the right position, we can actually drop the stroke weight down a bit and this gives you a much more realistic glass effect. Now, if we select this object, in addition to saving the gradient swatch, we can open up the graphic styles panel, drag this object into the panel and this entire object and all of its appearance effects are now saved as a graphic style. And I'll show you in a minute why this is super useful and a massive time saver. But before then, first of all, let's add an inflate effect. We're gonna throw in a bonus tip and I'll show you how to create a squircle shape. Yes, that is a real thing. But you can see it's not applying correctly. It's applying only to the stroke. So if we go ahead and undo that, we now need to apply this effect to everything. And to do that, we select the object and click at the very top, Path Graphic Style. So now any effects that we apply, in this case Inflate, will be applied to the whole object. And you can of course adjust the warp, but that is pretty much how to create a squircle shape. But now if we jump over to the next artboard, we're gonna actually see this glass effect in action. So I've copy and pasted this shape onto this artboard. And first of all, what we're gonna do is select the object and the background, copy paste in place, and then hold shift and use the right arrow key to nudge this out to the side. Next, what we're gonna to have to do on this new copy is expand the appearance. And ultimately we need to give this shape a solid fill. And it doesn't matter what color, only that we have a solid fill and no stroke. And if you do get some transparency in here, you'll need to go back into your appearance panel, maybe double click to go inside the group and then adjust that opacity back to 100%. And if we didn't apply the warp effect, this would be a lot simpler, but I just obviously had to complicate things. Anyway, next up, what we're gonna do is select the background and then we're gonna apply a Gaussian blur. Don't worry, you can change this value later. So just pick something you think looks pretty cool. And then what we're gonna do is select the background and this new magenta squircle, right click and create a clipping mask. So now this blurred copy of that colored background is now cropped inside this shape. And then holding shift and using the left arrow key, we can nudge it back into position, right click it, go to arrange, and then send it backwards so it's behind the glass shape. So now what's behind the glass is actually a bit more blurry and obscured, which can go a long way in really selling this glass effect. Now you can see I've added some text. This could be anything. All we've got to do is select the glass object and drag that little white square preview image onto the new object. And you can see just like that, we've instantly applied that graphic style to another object. And if you enjoyed this one, I've got another video on screen now somewhere. Not sure where, maybe it's on my face, no idea. Anyway, regardless, give it a click and I'll see you in a sec.